verse 30. All right, this will be a quick hit, okay, to exhort you, Akim, out there and your sisters to really reset yourself, man. Examine this because time is short. All right. So Sirach chapter 18, verse 30. Go not after thy lust, but refrain thyself from thine appetites. Right, man. The appetites of the flesh would dwell of no good thing. Okay. This flesh would get you in a whole lot of trouble, man. All right. It would take you far in the deep black hole and you can't get out of there. That's how bad it can get you. Have you low? Have you going in circles, depressed? Have you all messed up? We all been through it. We all been through it. If you believe sincerely in this truth, you know that demons come at you, you know, and you don't win all the battles, you know. But with that being said, you still have to keep trucking. You still have to keep fighting. And you fight. All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakurash. Yahweh is the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham, meaning in the name Yahweh Shai, is the true, holy, and powerful name of His only begotten Son, who is the Savior of the nation of Israel, starting off with the elect within the nation of Israel. And Israel consists of you so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, as well as you Israelite foreigners scattered abroad that may look like the nations where you've been scattered to, but are Israelites. And I also want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the whole for the elect. Pushing out this word in all sincerity and the truth. All right, this is the brother you call from the GMS Ranch on Des Moines, Iowa. Coming back at you with another lesson inspired by the Holy Spirit, Harvard Kakurash. All right, and this lesson is going to be um, entitled Lord's Will, the Flesh Pit. All right, which is a title the Spirit gave me. You know, um, I actually listened to the lesson that I uh, I played on the screen. You know, this is the, the elder, um, Aria. Nasai, all right, um, uh, out in uh, Dallas, all right, it's Salaki, if I, if I, if I said the elder's name or, or wrong, Aria, Aria Nasai, I believe, but, you know, uh, beautiful elder, always does uh, edifying lessons, so, you know, subscribe to the channel, but um, in this lesson, as it says in the title, time to get back your self-control now, and uh, as I was meditating on it, like I said, I listened to it a couple of days ago and I re-listened to it multiple times. And, you know, it was just eating the lesson uh, and, and the spirit had gave me the, uh, the title of the flesh pit in, uh, in my spirit uh, last night. And I went back and listened to it again. And that was something that uh, he mentioned, you know, uh, in this lesson is the flesh pit. <laughs> All right. And um, and. You know, at times, you know, we can fall into that, you know, uh, uh, in our walk. All right. Where it's whether it's a overindulgence in the flesh and then it's uh, because through that overindulgence or uh, uh, lack of uh, balance or, or losing uh, self-control, it's harder to dig out of that dig out of that pit. And the more that we overindulge in certain things, even though certain things may be lawful. All right. But the more that we overindulge in those things and uh, uh, the harder it is to, uh, to to dig ourselves out. Right. And this is just something I wanted to speak about, you know, uh, in this lesson, you know, and I want to start off with this in the book of uh, Romans, the 13th chapter, Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. It says in that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. And like the elder has said in the clip, you know, uh, the time is short. All right. We, we see all these things happening. We see that judgment is nigh. All right. Um, we see that, you know, Esau's uh, uh, really moving forward with his various plans and. You know, seeing uh, Esau doing these things, we know that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is forward, forwarding his agenda, all right, because everything is going according to his plans, all right, and uh, uh, time is shortening, all right, so there are certain things that, you know, uh, uh, we recognize that we need to uh, uh, address in our spheres. There are certain things that, you know, we should be identifying um, that we need to work on and having more of a, um, more of a spirit of, a spirit of urgency to address these things, all right, because we don't have much time. And the scriptures talk about how the bride hath made herself ready, all right, in the book of Revelation. And we are the bride, being the church of Yahweh Shai. And we make ourselves ready by working on the inward man. So there's things that we need to be praying, uh, praying out of us, all right. There's things that, you know, we need to be uh, praying to, uh, uh, to strengthen us and uh, allow us to endure in these last days for more faith, all right, character flaws that we have that can affect us and cause us to, uh, to fall away. All right, because there's different things that the spirit alerts us to and that brothers may alert us to and identify. All right. Um, within us that, you know, 
Yao Bashim Yahusha wants us to work on before he returns. Okay. You know, the scripture says in the book of Luke, the 21st chapter says, watch and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to stand before the son of man and to escape these uh, said perils, roughly paraphrasing it. All right. So everybody's not going to be accounted worthy. All right. And, um, <clears throat> You know, uh, uh, and and we hope to be found worthy, and it's all through the mercy of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. All right, but we see that the Lord has given us a blueprint, an outline of what the elect is going to be doing, what those individuals whom He's going to have mercy on are going to be doing. All right, and one of those things is continuing to uh, work on their spirits and transform and become uh, to the image of Yahweh Shai. All right. And we don't have much time. All right, we don't have uh, much time to, you know, to allow a. Uh, 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 certain things to continue to kick our ass if they are kicking our ass or whatever the case may be this is the time to use our spiritual tools or right, in the spiritual war that we're in to overcome all right because you know different things that we may be battling all right it should be a mentality of getting the victory and overcoming those things through yahweh shai all right not allowing certain things to have control over us all right getting the victory over these different things right so it says romans 13 and 12 the night is far spent the day is at hand let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light let us walk in honest let us walk honestly as in the day not in rioting all right rioting goes into what partying it up all right you know so it's not unlawful to you know uh to <laughs> You know, enjoy yourself. You know, you might have a, a drink, you know, at the bar with brothers and so on and so forth. This, of course, is not unlawful. All right. But we don't want to walk. All right. Uh, uh, in that spirit, so to speak. Right. We don't want to get caught up and overwhelmed and um, uh, uh, have that rule over us. I'll put it like that. Right. As we're going to read in another precept, it says, let us walk in in honesty. Uh, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness. Right. So it's not unlawful to drink. All right. You know, but overindulgence in these certain things. All right. Can dig us further in that pit and it's harder to dig out. So we have to exercise uh, self-control, moderation, temperance as the scriptures go into. And wisdom is teaching us these things in the book of wisdom. Solomon, the eighth chapter, it says how wisdom she teacheth prudence, justice, fortitude, and uh, temperance. And then uh, King Solomon said, these are the most valuable things that a man can have in his life. All right, those different uh, character traits, okay? All right, but the uh, the main one I wanna focus on by quoting that is the temperance. Temperance is uh, self-control. All right, temperance provides moderation, all right? So uh, a wise man, as the scripture says, knows when he slippeth, all right? As men of wisdom, we should know if we're out of balance, all right? We know our own spirits. We know if we're going too far. You know, we're knowing if we're doing too much, all right? We know if we're doing too little, all right? We should be uh, 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 knowing ourselves more. The scripture says, uh, know ye not your own selves, all right? Prove your own selves, you know, roughly paraphrasing it. All right, the scripture says, um, um, know what's evil for thy soul, then give not thyself over unto it, all right? So different brothers have different balances, okay? You know, and we have to know within ourselves, like, nah, I need to draw back from this or, okay, nah, I need to, whatever the case may be, right? So it says, uh, uh, it says, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering, all right? And what's chambering, all right? You know what happens in the bed chambers, all right? Getting busy, all right? You know, but our minds shouldn't be caught up in just getting ass, okay? To be playing, all right? You know, we men, you know what I'm saying? But our minds shouldn't be over all, uh, 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 a focus on that, you know, you know, like, uh, <laughs> I think it's the, uh, the elders out in, uh, might be in Atlanta, it might be the elder in Atlanta, but I know I've heard brothers mention it, you know, about, uh, you know, the dog, you know, don't be the dog with his, uh, pink thing out, <laughs> you know, you ever seen a dog and, and he hot getting busy, the, the little pink thing come out and nigga just horny, you know what I'm saying? Just doing the most, all right? This nigga will pick up a sock and hump it, <laughs> you know? Just over, just over and do just tripping, right? We don't want to be like that, okay? Have our mind locked in and focus on that, all right? But once again, you know, every brother knows their own balance. You know, if you're doing too much, knowing if that's all right, uh, affecting, you know, the spiritual growth, all right, in the spirit, all right, we should all know these things and we should be honest with ourselves and recognize these things and make the adjustments because once again, the time is short, all right? We don't want to, uh, going to this time with uh, regrets, all right, um, and, and and whatever the case it may be, all right. But it says um, it says not in uh, chambering and wantonness, all right, and wantonness. Um, what does it say? I forget what it said here. I just looked it up before the lesson. 
unbridled lust, all right? So not having a cap on these certain things, all right? It's unbridled, all right? There's no there's no limitation that, you know, uh, uh, we're setting ourselves to these certain things and, and, the, and, the, and the, the lust that we can indulge ourselves in, right? Not putting a cap on it, you know? But just overindulge in, in these things. So we don't want to have unbridled lust. We have to have a bridle. All right, we have to have a, a, a cap on these certain things, man. It says, uh, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof, right? So it says, make not uh, provision for the flesh and provision this food, all right? So not putting ourselves in positions to constantly feed the flesh because if we, uh, if we do that, the more that we feed the flesh, all right, the harder it is to dig out of that pit and the less spiritual we become and then we can slowly fall away all right then not be in the spirit harder to get in the spirit different things like that right and these are different things that can happen uh, in our walk right and the scriptures give us the guidelines and gives us the warnings of these things all right this is why paul is instructing us in these things this is why the spirit you know how about shimmy i was shy all right who created us created our spirits all right created this flesh all right has given us tools all right to uh to not fall deep into that pit because we're already in chains of darkness, right? You know, but we can dig ourselves deeper into the pit, you know, by not fasting, all right? Not cutting off certain things, all right? To where the flesh is ruling over us, right? You have even our people in the world, you know, and, and like it says in the book of St. John, the third chapter it says, light is coming to the world, but men love darkness rather than light. And neither do they come into the light lest their deeds were, should be reproved. Meaning that because they are caught up in their flesh, all right, and they don't want to correct themselves and, you know, they don't want to um, discipline themselves and so on and so forth. They don't want to come to the light. They despise the light because that means that they will have to put off certain things. Right. And they're holding on to these certain things that they don't want to put off so tightly. All right. To where they rather not come into the light. Right. You know, so we want to make sure that we are, not you know, uh, so caught up and over and uh, indulging in our flesh to where it takes away from the light. All right. It says, um. Uh, that's it. That's it on that. I want to grab this in the book of first Corinthians. You know, I heard this, uh, the saying, you know, and I've heard in, in, in various different ways, you know, so, but it was the saying that I've heard about, uh, two wolves. All right. There's two wolves within you. It's like an old native American saying, like sometimes it's two wolves, sometimes it's two bears, but you know, nevertheless, it's like, it's two wolves within you. All right. And then applying in the spirit, you know, it's like one of those wolves is the flesh and one of them is the spirit. And who's going to win out of those two? Well, whichever one you're feeding the most, right? So we want to make sure that we're speed, feeding the spirit the most so then it could overcome the flesh. Not saying that we aren't going to lose certain battles all right, and we're going to fall short, right? But we don't want that other wolf being the flesh to just be overtaken and kicking our ass and overcoming the spirit, all right? But that comes through what? What are we feeding more, right? So this is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse uh, 12. It says, uh, <clears throat> all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. All right. And that's how we end up in that <laughs> the flesh pit. All right. You know, where these different things that are lawful unto us to do to do within the liberty that we have. All right. But then those same things all right, become uh, 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 control. It controls us. All right, through us giving ourselves over unto those things. And like the elder uh, mentioned, I can't remember if it was in the clip that I played there. Oh, yeah, you, you, you'll you lose a, a self of a, you lose confidence. All right, you know, because you're just losing battles, losing the flesh. You know you're losing. Or you, you start feeling way weaker. You know what I'm saying? You know, not really putting up a fight, right? Just sitting there, just, just you know, taking the L's. We don't want to find ourselves in that position. We want to continue to fight. We want to continue to, you know, uh, uh, resist or uh, resist this flesh. All right. But it says all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Right. And reading in the NLT, it says I must not become a slave to anything. So we don't want those things to be ruling over us. All right. You know, to where it's controlling us as opposed to being uh, influenced by the spirit to overcome the flesh. All right. You know, now it's the next thing you know, you, uh, you wanted to do a lesson, was finna do a lesson and get into some reading. And then you get that text from that, 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 that hot thing you wanted. Right. And then you denying the, the spirit. All right. Because of being so hot in the flesh. Right. 
Sure, brothers have made different mistakes, all right, or whatever the case may be, but we don't want to get into a pattern of that and being able to recognize it, like, bro, I just, man, I just fucking, just let my flesh just, <laughs> just fucking, you know, kick my ass right there, you know, lost that one. And once again, have to keep it real with ourselves, right? Or it could be anything, man, you know? You know, the brothers might be linking up or whatever the case may be, it could be random, you know? You had plans to go, uh, to go hoop or go to the gym or whatever the case it may be, right? And then it's like, ah, man, brothers is linking up. And then you make that decision, all right, <laughs> to be like, all right, I ain't finna link up with Jake because, you know, you, you want to go do whatever you want to do, all right? Now, everything's done in, done, in, done in its balance, right? But, you know, we should have the mind frame of the spear ruling over the flesh, Man, fuck that word. I can work out another day or I can go hoop another day or whatever the case may be. Brothers is linking up in the spirit like, you know, it could be a spiritual nugget that's waiting for me to to receive or whatever the case may be. And making those spiritual decisions has us to grow and has us to overcome the flesh. All right. To where we are not in that pit. All right. And hard to dig out because we don't want to have a consistent pattern of constantly choosing the flesh over the spirit. Right. So it says. um, um, That's it on. That's it. And actually, I want to go into this word uh, expedient. All right. Now, the word expedient in the Edamon online, it says uh, advantageous, fit, proper to purpose. Right. And I want to just get to the point here. It says uh, that which serves to advance a desired result. All right. That which serves to advance a desired result. So everything that is lawful for us to do. All right. It's not advancing us to a desired result. OK. Now, once again, well, of course, we understand that we have liberty, all right, to do certain things, and we have to give our, you know, you can't be in the, in the, in the reading twenty four seven. You ain't gonna be watching lessons twenty four seven and so on and so forth, all right. You know, we we have to know our balance, right? But be still being mindful that everything is not advancing us to the desired result of the kingdom of being molded to the image of Yahweh Shah, all right, and 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 recognizing that, right? So all things are lawful, but all things are not moving us in that direction, right? And then it says all things are lawful or uh, uh, excuse me, I meant to. Um, yeah, yeah. All things are lawful, but all things edify not. Right. <clears throat> In the other uh, precept that Paul, Paul uh, says, man. All right. And edify means to build up. All right. So everything isn't building us up to that desired result. All right. To be plain, you know. And we have to recognize that and know if like, OK, I'm spending too much time doing this or this is taking too much of my my mental space. All right. Certain things, you know. It, it just weighs on, you know, uh, our minds heavier, right? You know, to where it's taking away our attention from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Scripture says, wisdom delivered from pain, those that attended upon her. That word attend means to direct one's mind or energy. It literally means to stretch the mind towards something, right? So there's certain things that could be taking too much of our mind away from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And we have to recognize those things, right? And we have to recognize it and, and, and if we getting too deep into that pit, all right, <laughs> like uh, we we use out here the term, you got to hit that panic button, man. All right. Had to hit that panic button. You know, you recognize like, damn, is this worth my salvation? You know, let me fast. Let me not. Nah, let me get out of here, man. You know, you might recognize like, all right, I need to chill out. And then it's hard for you to chill out <laughs> with whatever it is. It's hard for you to cut off certain things and it becomes more difficult at one point. You know, it was easy. It might have been easy for you to fast and now it's way more difficult. You know, certain times it could be just a matter of just indulging in the flesh too much or, you know, whatever the case may be. And we go through different battles. So that's not always the case, you know, of course. But, you know, being mindful and recognizing these things, you know, so a lot of these things is just food for thought and uh, self-reflection. You know what I'm saying? Through the spirit. So, you know, the time is short and this is the, the time to be working on ourselves. Right. So let's uh, end it off with these couple of precepts. And so lucky if I was over speaking this one to uh give the sense of what I was trying to say through the spirit. All right. But this is uh, Galatians chapter five and verse uh, 16. It says this. I say, then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Right. So we want to be walking in the spirit. All right. And the more that we feed the spirit. All right. The more that it will overcome our flesh. All right. But the more that we feed our flesh, the harder it is. All right. To get out of that pit. All right. It's like literally digging. You know, you dig in a pit and then next thing you know, you keep digging, you keep digging. And then it's hard as hell to climb out that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? You know, but if we're in our proper balance, all right, we keep our spiritual momentum moving forward. You know, we continue to grow and so on and so forth. All right. Then, you know, we, we have better control 
all right, over ourselves, control over uh, uh, this flesh, all right? It says, um, uh, this I say, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that you would. So it's always going to be a battle, all right, between the flesh and the spirit until Yahweh Shah returns and gives us the new bodies, all right? The scripture says, neither could they give themselves the fleshly hearts for stony. So this is just the condition of the battle that we are in. And as uh, uh, it was told unto Ezra, all right, if we be overcome, then we'll suffer the things that are written. But if we get the victory, then we'll receive the reward that was said, roughly paraphrasing it. All right, so this is the battle that we're in. And once again, all right, the Lord has given us the tools. Even the elder, he did a lesson. You know, um, I'll go to his page real quick. He did a lesson uh, entitled, uh, Are You Using Your Weapons? All right, think about it, you know, so I'll check out that lesson as well. You know, so the Lord has given us tools. He knows that we're in the flesh. He knows the battles that we're going, that we go through. And he's given us the tools so that we can overcome, so that we can get the victory. And it's all through him, through faith in, he, in these words, trusting the instructions and the guidance that he's given us, all right, to, uh, to overcome. All right. It says, um, uh, that's it. That's it in that. All right. So let's end it up, end it up with, uh, Romans, the eighth chapter, you know, Lord's will, you know, is, uh, you know, edifying, man. Romans 8 and verse uh, 5, it says, uh, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. All right. And we don't want to get caught in that whew, in that mentality, man. Oh, just looking over the NLT, it says those who are dominated by the sinful nature. Think about sinful things. Right. And once again, everything isn't a sin breaking the law. All right. We do have liberty. All right. But we don't want to be dominated by these things. All right. There's times where in my walk, I'm like, bro, this shit is fucking kicking my ass i'm being dominated right now hell nah <laughs> you know well ain't no way you know then you yeah you hit that you hit that panic button you know gotta tap them up a couple times get up out of there all right <laughs> get up out that pit tripping you know you know what i'm saying we gotta keep it real with ourselves and yahweh shah is there to succor us i right, remember yahweh shah said i came for them that uh um, that are uh not righteous but those that are uh uh, how the how's the word of Salakia? I came for them that need a physician. I'll say that. All right, let me just let me just type it in. I'm blue. I butcher that. I mix like three precepts and half quoted one, and it's, it's all types of madness. <laughs> physician. All right. All right. This is uh, Mark chapter two and verse. Uh, 17 when Yahweh Shai heard it he said unto them they that are whole have no need of a physician right so if we're saying we got it we ain't, you know you ain't battling and you just straight you cool and coasting right well all right cool then you're fine all right <laughs> you know so they that are whole have no need of the physician but they that are sick I came not to call the righteous but sinners to repentance so we got to recognize that you know there's things that we're, we're battling with things that we're weakened or whatever the case may be and ask the Lord for strength because once again he's a succor unto us Right. He's a help. And as we confess these different things and we tell, hey, Lord, I'm battling this. Give me the strength to overcome, you know, or whatever the case may be. All right. Jake, know their own personal walks, you know, and then as we lean to Yahweh Shah, then he gives us the strength, the victory, the tools, takes us through certain experiences that that, that uh, uh, makes us better. All right. To where we do overcome and to we, where we are winning those battles. All right. To where with certain battles that you might have been losing at. All right. Now you, you're winning. You're overcoming. You're getting that spiritual momentum. You're moving forward. You're growing. All right. So on and so forth, man. All right. And continuing in that in that cycle. All right. <laughs> you know. So it says uh, back in that Romans eight and uh, six now for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And we don't want to slip into a carnal mind. All right. Just con constantly just trying to indulge in the flesh in the flesh. Right. Because a carnal mind is enmity against the most high for it is not subject to the law of the most high. Neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please the most high. So we don't want to find ourselves having a carnal mind in the flesh. All right. Constantly consume in the mind about, you know, when's the next next fix for the flesh or whatever the case may be. All right. Like an animal or brute beast. We don't want to slip into that mentality. All right. Because even though we have this word, if we aren't applying these things, if we aren't actually utilizing the tools that we have. All right. It's not going to profit us. All right. That's why the scriptures talk about an individual that can profit many others, but is unprofitable to himself because he's not utilizing the same tools and instructions that he has or that he's been given through wisdom. 
right? So we want to be careful of uh, not slipping into that. So, you know, Lord, that Lord's what I was edifying, you know, uh, self-reflecting and, you know, exhorting at the same time, man. And um, having that being said, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakudash, the honors to the elders and apostles of great millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and in truth. With that, I'm going to say Shalom.